If you own the DJI Pocket 2, do you need to go out and buy the Sony ZV-E10 to up your vlogging game? We have you covered. Let's take a Jam Life Tech Adventure. Hi everyone, welcome to Jam Life Tech Talk. I'm John. Please, if you're new to the channel, subscribe, ring the bell so you won't miss anything and hit the like button. So after the release of the DJI Pocket 2 and making a few videos on it, I realized that some of you guys were really passionate about this camera. I was on the fence about it at the start, but after a lot of testing, I see what you guys mean. It's really a great camera with the best stabilization of these vlogging cameras because it is mechanical. There's just one reason for me that it doesn't become my everyday camera and that may be personal, but we're gonna talk about that after we've done some side-by-sides and testing. And just to let you know that DJI Pocket 2 is still a great camera and I can understand why some of you guys love it so much. The Sony does pivot in some areas, but is that a real deal breaker when the camera has such awesome stabilization? I think that's a question only each individual vlogger can answer. So before we get into it, a couple of things. The lenses used for the Sony ZV-E10 were the Sony 10 to 18 f4 and for bokeh and low light testing the sigma 16 mm f 1.4 sony's catalyst browse was used to stabilize the zve 10 and we used the wireless mic from the creator skip combo on the pocket 2. and just so you guys have an idea here sony zve 10 upwards of a thousand dollars for camera and a couple of good lenses and the DJI Pocket 2 499 for the Creators Combo. That is under half the price, guys. Just shows you why this is a great little camera. I'll tell you about that one thing and we'll also come back and discuss the advantages of each camera after the side-by-sides. So enjoy. Okay, this is a mic check in front of the camera with the Sony ZV-E10. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three. And this is a mic check from behind the camera. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three. Okay, this is a mic check with the DJI Pocket 2. And I'm using the included ProKit wireless mic. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three. Just to tell you, this doesn't matter whether I'm behind or in front of the camera we're going to get the same result. So firstly, here's a time-lapse on the ZV-E10. And what I love about the DJI Pocket 2 is it does motion lapses with the gimbal. One of my favorite reasons for using this camera. Both images really clear here, but that motion does give it an extra edge. And here in the slow motion test, you can see the DJI Pocket 2 is filming in 4K and the ZV-E10 in 1080p, which gives the Pocket 2 a bit of an advantage here. The image does look a lot cleaner. Here in the handheld tripod test, you can see that nothing's gonna beat that mechanical stabilization of the DJI Pocket 2 holding the horizon very flat and stable. And in the slow pan test here again, the same appears to be happening. DJI Pocket 2 is the real winner in stabilization. And same goes in the fast pan test. Stabilization won by the DJI Pocket 2. So as we move into the walking and running test, uh, sorry about the DJI Pocket 2 being a little bit higher than the ZV-E10. I just had it sitting above the ZV-E10 on my multi-mount tripod. But you can see here again that in both the walking and running tests, the DJI Pocket 2 is winning. What you've got to consider here is if Catalyst Browse on the Sony ZV-E10 is enough to stabilize your shots. 
if you're happy with that amount of stabilization, do you really need to be in the realm of the stabilization of the DJI Pocket 2? But the thing is that the DJI Pocket 2 is always going to win with mechanical stabilization. I also want to highlight here in the walking blog test how much you have to crop in with Catalyst Browse on the ZV-E10, whereas you've got a lot more field of view on the DJI Pocket 2. Focus test on the ZV-E10 just to show you what it can achieve. This is what that APS-C sensor and interchangeable lenses can do for you. And this is the low light test from ISO 100 right through to ISO 800. The Sony is the absolute clear winner here. If you need low light shooting, you have to go with the Sony. We don't see a result really on the Pocket 2 until 800 ISO and the Sony pretty much has the shot at 100. I've said it before, but there's so much choice for vloggers again this year, right? And these are two of the best vlogging cameras you'll find. So let's look at the Sony ZV-E10 first to see its advantages. Firstly, where the Sony wins again is in low light. The Pocket 2 isn't even close, and it's never going to win against the APS-C sensor and interchangeable lenses that Sigma does such a great job. Next, blurred background or bokeh achieved on the Sony. The DJI Pocket 2 can achieve this to a certain extent, but does not come near the Sony, and depth of field is much loved by many vloggers, and for some, a deal breaker. Next, the large flip screen. It really does help you frame your shot properly, get focus and correct exposure. Next, the pro features on the ZV-E10. It really does let you be as automatic as you want or as manual as you want. If you're a professional or amateur, you really do have the best of both worlds on this camera. Next, the vast array of lenses you can use on the ZV-E10 does make for a world of different focal lengths, sharpness, and as we discussed earlier, depth of field. Lastly, for me, and I'm sure there are a lot more, but it's audio quality. The ZV-E10, like the ZV-1's built-in mic, is a far superior option for recording. Down there at the beach has to be the worst conditions, but the wind noise was right down and my voice was very plainly well heard. I was quite surprised that the external mic that comes with the DJI Creators Combo wouldn't do better. As it does come with some wind protection. So what about the DJI Pocket 2? Where do its advantages lie? Well, you firstly have to say the price, right? This camera can be well under half the price of the Sony with a couple of good lenses. And this is a good camera with the best stabilization. So it's something to really consider. I mean, it's under half the price, right? Next would have to be the stabilization. This camera just beats everything on the market for stabilization really. And it's mechanical, which means yes, it will also work in low light if the camera can keep up with the low light that is. Next, slow motion in 4K. With 4K at 60p, you can feel slow motion in 4K instead of 1080p. So it is a lot cleaner. And I really do like that. Lastly, size and weight. It's a lot smaller and doesn't take up nearly as much room in my bag. So what is the one thing that really stops me from making the DJI Pocket 2 my daily camera? And this may be a really personal thing for me guys, but it's the durability. I really feel like I'm gonna break it all the time with that gimbal sticking out the end. I know you have the case to put it in and all of that, but it's just how I feel about it. If you can get over that and the low light performance, this is a great camera for you as a vlogger and will save you heaps of cash. But for me, I need bokeh and I need low light performance and Catalyst Browse does enough for me in terms of stabilization. If not, I can always use my DJI RSC2. But I always love to take the DJI Pocket 2 out sometimes for different shots and that motion time lapse, it does so well. And that's why for me, I keep hanging on to it. But what did you guys think? Tell me what's your favorite vlog camera in the comment section below and what you like about it. And that's it for today's video. 
hope it helped you out. Please don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, hit the like button, all that good stuff, and we'll see you on the next Jam Life Tech Adventure.